Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say shout it right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast. I am your host, Fern Bannatine, and it is. Uh, the beginning of summer, uh, we have uh, Independence Day, of course, coming up in the United States. We have Canada Day here in Canada, where I am, situated here in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, we got some great weather over here. I hope everybody's enjoying the first of the lazy days of summer. Uh, there's All is quiet on the NFL front. There's really not much going on insofar as news goes. Uh, OTAs have wrapped up. We won't get started again until late July when we get into training camp, and then the uh, preseason starts in August. Uh, So given the quiet time of the year, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for a fun little show here. Uh, There's been a lot of discussion recently on Buffalo Fanatics platforms about the the Buffalo Bills defense and what the prognosis is going into the 2019 season. Uh, Can we maintain our status as a top five defense in the league? Uh, We were third overall in total defense last season, although we didn't fare as well in the points allowed category. Now, I don't want him to be the scapegoat of the entire season, but I think Nathan Peterman's early season struggles really put us in a bit of a hole early on. We weren't able to sustain any drives, lots of turnovers. But I think after those first few games, our defense really picked it up. And in particular, late in the season when Tremaine Edmonds started to play his best football and Levi Wallace had locked down the second cornerback spot, our defense was had really transitioned and was on the upswing. Uh, but this discussion did get me thinking about where we do rank and uh, where I project all 32 teams in the league um, defensively. And what I thought I'd do is do a little snake countdown uh, from 32 to to 1, the worst to the first defenses in the NFL in terms of a projection for the 2019 season. And the marker for success would be uh, both kind of total yards allowed and, and points allowed per game. And what I'll do is I'll we'll discuss some of the... Uh, player acquisitions and player losses and how that impacts the certain teams, maybe new defensive coordinators coming into the season. I I tried to consider as many factors as I could as I ranked these defenses from worst to first. So we'll we'll get the show started. Uh, It's going to be a little bit of a longer show than usual. I hope to get it to around about the 35 to 40 minute mark. And I won't give away too much except to say that the the Bills don't don't get the number one overall ranking, but... uh, uh, let me know what you think of uh, where I rank the Buffalo Bills and if you agree or disagree with my prognosis. For that matter, you can leave your opinions on any of these rankings. Always up for some good football discussion. Uh, you can leave me comments on YouTube. You can hit me up on Twitter. It's at FBanity. That's at F-B-A-N-N-A-T-Y. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So in 32nd place, I chose the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I take no pride or comfort or solace in ranking the Bengals in particular in last place. I don't want to rank anybody in last place, really. I'm a nice guy. But of course, in particular, I have a soft spot for the Bengals for the help they gave us in beating the Baltimore Ravens a few seasons back to assist us in ending our playoff drought. Uh, But I just, gosh, what I saw last year, uh, notably in the second half of the year, now granted they had lost quite a few players to injury at that point, but man, offenses were going through that defense like a sieve. They could not stop anybody. They ended up ranking last in the league in yards allowed per game. Uh, They finished 30th out of 32 teams in points allowed per game. I recall at one point during the season that they were actually on pace to break the record for most yards allowed per season in the history of the NFL. Uh, They didn't break that record, but uh, all in all, it was a season to forget on the defensive side of the ball for Cincinnati. Now, like I mentioned, they were ravaged by injuries, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Carl Lawson and uh, Darkeese Denard come to mind. But overall, I couldn't find really good justification to uh, to move them out of last place here. They'll have the players coming back from injury, but otherwise they didn't really do much in the offseason to uh, fix the defense. Of course, they lost Vontae's perfect for as much of an asshole as he is. He was a pretty decent player for them. In the draft, they focused mostly on offense, trying to fix that offensive line. They drafted a tight end in the second round. They do have a new defensive coordinator coming in, but he's a relative unknown. He's a former defensive backs coach for the New York Giants. I don't know much about him. So I have to give the worst overall ranking to the Cincinnati Bengals. At number 31 overall, I chose the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Here's another team that had a porous defense in 2018. They ranked 31st out of 32 teams in yards, uh, sorry, points per game, uh, 27th out of 32 teams in yards per game. Uh, they did focus on the defensive side of the ball in the draft, and I'm, I do like their, particularly their first two draft picks. Uh, Devin White should be an instant impact starter. Uh, I really like their second round pick and cornerback Sean Bunting from Central Michigan. I think he has a chance to be a really good cover corner in this league. But of course, on the on the pass rush side of things, they did lose Jason Pierre-Paul, who was their best and only real pass rush threat last year. He's out for the season. Uh, outside of him, I don't really know who's going to be bringing that outside rush pressure. Uh, on the interior, of course, they lost Gerald McCoy. Their uh, secondary is uh, in shambles right now. Of course, they did draft Sean Bunting. They do have a young cornerback in Carlton Davis, who they drafted last year. But a lot of uh, unproven players in that secondary. Okay, moving on at uh, 30th overall, I chose an AFC East rival in the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins are a bit of a unique pick here because, well, first of all, they do have a nice young secondary uh, with Xavier Howard and Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, Rashad Jones is still around. Then at linebacker, uh, it's uh, an underwhelming group, but not, not necessarily a bad group of linebackers. Uh, Jerome Baker was a really pleasant surprise as a rookie last year. Of course, Kiko Alonso is still around. Uh, Ray Kwame Millen's a, a young linebacker who could, has a good chance to keep improving. Now, the real trouble for me starts with this defensive line, and in particular, their edge rushers. Last year, they ranked 29th in the league in sacks, and um, here they go, lose Cameron Wake and Robert Quinn, uh, their two best edge rushers. And the question is, who are they replacing them with? Who are their starting defense ends right now? Are they really, really going to rely on Charles Harris, who, by most accounts, has been a bust up to this point in his career? They have... Uh, Former Jacksonville Jaguars seventh round pick Jonathan Woodward on the roster. It's a really ugly situation on the edge there in Miami. Uh, in the interior, they look a little better, but uh, of course they drafted Christian Wilkins in the first round this year. I don't think you can expect too much out of him in terms of pass rush though in his first year. So I think uh, just not getting pressure on the quarterback is going to put a, r- a real strain on this secondary, and it's going to be hard for them to uh, make uh, any sort of amount of plays and generate uh, turnovers, which they had some success doing last year. I think it's clear that the Dolphins are uh, not so discreetly tanking this year. Uh, they got rid of a lot of uh, veteran salaries, uh, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. I think they're going to make a run for that first overall pick in the NFL draft next year, and free up some salary cap space. So I'm not really expecting much from the Dolphins' defense this year. All right then, at number 29, I chose the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, now this is a t- another team that had an absolutely terrible defense last year. They allowed an, an astronomical number of over 400 yards per game average. Now they did lead the NFL in sacks last year, or at least tied for the league uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I think a lot of that was because they did get off to those early leads and uh, forced a lot of teams to throw. Of course, that also contributed to a lot of the passing yards they gave up, but I did not see a really good defense last year, and it hurt them, obviously, in the playoffs. Now, in the offseason, they they did add a really nice piece in Frank Clark, a former Seattle Seahawk, who looks like a really good pass rusher, averages around 13 sacks a year the last few years. Chris Jones really came into his own last year and looks like a budding superstar. But it's it really, the, for me, it's the secondary that that's the issue. They uh, lost Eric Berry, of course. Uh, they never really repl- replaced Marcus Peters. Their cornerback situation looks fairly dire. And I can see the same situation as last year where they have a tremendously uh, dynamic offense but just can't stop anybody and it will probably hurt them in the playoffs unless things turn around quickly for them. Uh, number 28, I chose the Oakland Raiders. Uh, lo and behold, another team that really struggled last year. Uh, easily the worst pass rush in the league. <laughs> 13 total sacks on the season. I think their best two pass rushers last year were rookies in Arden Key and Maurice Hurst, who didn't really do anything too consistently. Of course, they've added a nice another young piece in Cleveland Farrell, who should help that pass rush as well. Jonathan Abram was a nice pickup at safety. He should be a tone setter. Uh, they drafted some nice young cornerbacks. And these are, these are some of the reasons why I actually ranked them a little higher than where they ranked last year. Still probably one of the worst defenses in the league. But I'll give Mike Mayock and company a little credit for some of the uh, acquisitions they made in the draft. At number 27, I have the New York Jets, another AFC East rival. Uh, For a number of years now, they they seem to have been averse from acquiring pass rush assets under Todd Bowles. 
And now Greg Williams comes over from Cleveland. Uh, we're probably going to see a little more uh, more 4-3 looks, although he has stated that he, he doesn't want to start with a 3-4 base with New York, probably given their current personnel. Uh, and I, I'm not crazy about the hire. I, I'm not the biggest Williams fan. I actually think he did a pretty good job as a head coach when he took over last season for the fired Hugh Jackson. But if you look at the talent that he had on defense with those young edge rushers, Denzel Ward had a nice rookie season. Demarius Randall's a good good solid player. I don't think he got results over there with the 30th overall ranked defense in 2018. I think part of the problem with Williams is he left his starters in too long in Cleveland. He didn't really take them off the field, and it seems like they uh, got gas late in games. So we'll see how it all plays out this year, but I'm a little skeptical that he's going to turn things around, at least in 2019 with the Jets. Now at number 26, we don't have to go too far in proximity. We have the the New York Giants. Uh, Here's a team that ranked... uh, 24th overall in defense, total defense last year. Uh, they had really terrible sack production. They were 30th in the league in that category. Uh, and of course, this offseason, they've lost uh, both Olivia Vernon and Landon Collins, two of their better defenders from last year. So it's likely there'll be a little uh, regression in 2019. Uh, that being said, I-, I am a fan of their defensive coordinator, uh, James Betcher. I-, I like the job he did when he was with the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they do have some nice young pieces in place with uh, Lorenzo Carter, B.J. Hill had a nice rookie season last year. I'm a big fan of DeAndre Baker. Uh, But I think it's going to be another transition year for them, and it'll take a few years before all these young players develop and they field a a decent NFL defense. Uh, Number 25, I have the Atlanta Falcons. This is a defense that really struggled last year, really let that team down when they had uh, playoff and maybe even Super Bowl aspirations. The secondary didn't really make any plays. Uh, Their pass rush really really was non-existent uh, other than uh, Takaris McKinley. Uh, Vic Beasley disappeared last year. Uh, Defensive tackle has been an ongoing problem for the team, and they've done nothing in the offseason to address that position. Now, the defense probably underachieved a a little bit last year, but still, I didn't see a a real focus in the offseason to add any pieces to that defense. Of course, they focused mostly on the offensive line in the draft. They also lost a few key secondary players, so I'm not seeing much room for improvement this year. Next up, uh, we move to the NFC West. At number 24, we have the Arizona Cardinals. They do have some foundational pieces to build off. That is, if they do retain Patrick Peterson. They actually have the making of a pretty impressive secondary here with Patrick Peterson. Uh, They signed Robert Alford. They drafted Byron Murphy with the first pick of the second round of the NFL draft this past season. Uh, Buda Baker's a nice player. They brought in DJ Swearinger over from Washington, provided he keeps his attitude in check. He should be a nice piece as a physically imposing strong safety. But I'm not a big fan of their defensive line. Uh, in particular, they, they really lack depth along the defensive line. Of course, Robert Kim Dietschy has never really developed into a viable starter. Uh, Corey Peters is a nice nose tackle, but uh, he's pretty limited in what he does at this point in his career. They also lost pass rusher Marcus Golden, who had put together a nice uh, second season a few years back with 13 sacks. But I will say, uh, we're, we're at the category now. Here with the Cardinals, uh, we've reached the next uh, category or class of defenses. I don't think the Cardinals are exactly a bad defense, but they're in the below average category. The next five defenses or so are probably in that below average category as well. And that leads to the next below average team on the list, and that's at number 23, the Cleveland Browns. And I see with the Browns here that we have uh, sort of a high variance defense. Uh, I think it can go either way this season for, for good or for bad. They have a new defensive coordinator coming in. Uh, They brought in Olivier Vernon. Uh, Miles Garrett continues to develop. They brought in Greedy Williams to play opposite of Denzel Ward. So there's definitely some nice pieces in place to make a big jump from where they were last year in 2018, where they ranked amongst the bottom of the league in most defensive categories. Uh, They brought in a nice defensive coordinator in Steve Wilkes, who had some success with the Carolina Panthers in his one year as defensive coordinator and was, uh, was very sought after after, after that one season of success in Carolina. Uh, their linebacker depth uh, behind Joe Shorbert is a little bit concerning. They do have some nice young players in place, but so we'll see how quickly they develop and fill some important roles there. Now at number 22, uh, this team might be a bit of a surprise, but I chose the Seattle Seahawks here. And for me, it's a defense that I really have respected o- over the last few years with the Legion of Boom. Uh, but they, they've just lost too many key players to that defense, and it's going to be very hard. I think it, it's an, yet again another one of those teams that's going to have a bit of a transition here. Uh, to lose a guy like Frank Clark, uh, an Earl Thomas, a Cam Chancellor, uh, Justin Coleman, who was a nice uh, slot cornerback, 
and not really bringing in any uh, kind of in fact impactful players to replace these guys i think it's going to be difficult for them they did draft uh, lj collier uh, late in the first round they brought in easy kill ansa so we'll see if he can bounce back from injury and provide the pass rush spark uh, with cornerbacks they have two, two young players that uh, still need some development. Trey Flowers looked really good in his in his first season as a starter, as a rookie, moving over from safety in college. Uh, the other cornerback, Shaq Griffin, had a little bit of a decline last year after his outstanding rookie season. Uh, they're really going to need him to bounce back if they want to put together a, a decent defense this year. Now at number 21, we have uh, one of the Seattle Seahawks' main rivals, and that's the San Francisco 49ers. Now I will say, uh, even though they have this they're in this bit lower average category. They're probably one of the most improved defenses. I think they did probably the most of any team in the NFL uh, to improve their defense in the offseason. I really like their acquisitions here. of D. Ford, Nick Bosa, Quan Alexander came over from Tampa Bay. Uh, they have a pretty imposing threesome of edge defenders in DeForest Buckner, uh, Nick B- Bosa, and D. Ford. And then on the second level, they have uh, Alexander and a young and improving Fred Warner. It uh, looks like the secondary might still be a bit in flux, but overall a below average defense that's quickly improving and they have a, a chance to take a big step forward, especially if they get that uh, pass rush really going this year. Now next up at number 20, we have another team who made a lot of changes in this offseason, and that's the Carolina Panthers. Uh, looks like they're switching from a 4-3 base defense to a 3-4 look. They brought in Gerald McCoy. Uh, they still have some really nice foundational pieces in Kwan Short and Luke Keekley. There's definitely a lot of buzz generating about their uh, fearsome front seven. But I have my reservations. I'm not totally convinced at this point that they're immediately morph into uh, an extremely strong defense. They probably ranked around the uh, middle of the pack last year. 15th in total defense, 19th in points allowed. Uh, they were in the bottom quarter of the league in sacks generated. And I think they're bringing in two, uh, two rookie pass rushers in Brian Burns and Christian Miller. And they expect them to take on a pretty big role and fill Julius Pepper's shoes. And they also lost another uh, veteran leader in Thomas Davis in the offseason. Their secondary is uh, below average. In particular, their safeties are a bit of a cause for concern. So I don't expect them to take a huge jump forward just yet this year. I still think they're a fairly below average defense at this point. Uh, but a defense that might make an, a big jump over the next, say, two years or so, if the young players start to develop. So at number 19, I, I chose the Green Bay Packers. It's another defense that's made a lot of changes in the offseason, for better for, or for worse. I think they can uh, deviate both ways here. Their total defense ranked 18th in the league last year. Uh, they were 22nd in points allowed. So I'm not swaying too far from last year's production. Uh, they did lose Clay Matthews and Nick Perry, two of their key pass rushers. But then they turned around and brought in Rashawn Gary as Darius Smith. Uh, Preston Smith from the Redskins. They added a nice safety in Adrian Amos. But it's a really hard team to project exactly wh- what all these players mean and how the defense is going to come together. I do like Mike Pettin. He was a former Buffalo Bills defensive coordinator, of course. Had some success with a very aggressive defense in his limited time here. Uh, but I just can't move them up or down too much based on their additions and subtractions. So we'll leave them here right around 19, uh, very similar to where they ranked last year. Okay, at, uh, 18th overall. And I have a feeling this one's going to bite me in the ass. But uh, I chose the New England Patriots here. I have a bit of a conditioned fear with New England. I don't like to see anything negative about them because they always seem to come back and prove me wrong. But if you look back to the 2018 season, uh, their defense did have some struggles, at least in some respect. Uh, they were tied for 30th in the league in sacks. Uh, their pass defense was excellent, and they, w- they were 7th in the league in points allowed, but overall their defense was around uh, 22nd overall. I just look at that defensive line, and it's a bit concerning. Of course, they lost Trey Flowers. Uh, they lost Malcolm Brown and Danny Shelton in the middle of that defense, so their starters on the defensive line just don't look that imposing. Of course, they did bring in Michael Bennett over from the Eagles, who is expected to replace Trey Flowers. Uh, their secondary is still solid, of course, with Stephon Gilmore back there and the McCourty brothers. Uh, so I see a defense overall that's around the average range. I had them at number 18 here, but I think we're moving into the category now where uh, you have a bunch of average defenses here in the next few picks. That segues nicely to the next team, which is uh, average in all respects, and that's the Washington Redskins. Unfortunately for Redskins fans, they haven't been able to generate any consistent success in the last little while. I think they have some nice players on defense, in particular in that defensive line with Jonathan Allen and a few other good young players. 
Uh, they signed Landon Collins, a safety over from their division rivals, New York Giants. But I just don't see uh, an identity on this defense. I think they're lacking a bit of direction. Greg Manuski, the defensive coordinator, has never really impressed me. They have Rob Ryan on the staff as a linebacker's coach, which, in my opinion, automatically brings him down a notch. I was really excited to see how Reuben Foster fares in his kind of bounce back here with the Redskins before he suffered a pretty gruesome injury and he'll be out for the season. So overall, uh, I think the Redskins fans could expect another season of mediocrity, at least on this defense. At number 16, uh, squarely in the average category, we have the Detroit Lions. I think with the Lions, it uh, starts with the secondary. They have a pretty good secondary, and Darius Slay is one of the best cornerbacks in the league. They brought Justin Coleman over from the Seahawks. Uh, Quandre Driggs moving to safety is a nice little piece there. I think it's clearly uh, an above-average secondary. Then you get to the defensive line, and it's right around average. Trey Flowers was obviously a very nice acquisition in the offseason, but then they did lose their uh, most dynamic pass rusher from last year in Ezekiel Ansa. They don't really have another dynamic pass rusher other than Flowers. Other linebackers are slightly below average. Uh, Jared Davis hasn't really put it together yet in his career. We'll see how the young linebacker they drafted out of Hawaii in the second round fares on that defense. But overall, it's a, it's a fairly average defense, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, Matt Patricia's on the, on the hot seat if that team struggles a little bit again this year. All right, at number 15, uh, still in the average category, uh, we have the Houston Texans. Now, funny enough, the Texans obviously have some pretty key foundational players on that defense, particularly on the defensive line, and J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney, uh, provided he's still on the team going into the season. They have a nice linebacking core with those tall, slender linebackers and uh, McKinley and Zach Cunningham. Uh, but then the secondary is where, where the problems start. It's a secondary that's gone through a major makeover and losing Tyrone Matthew. They lost Kareem Jackson. Of course, they lost Kevin Johnson, who signed with the Bills. In the draft, they selected uh, Lonnie Johnson, the, line, the sorry, the cornerback out of Kentucky in the second round. Wasn't a big fan of him. I think he's still still a long ways away from being uh, an impact starter in this league. They did bring in Bradley Roby over from the Broncos, who might be able to solidify one of those cornerback spots. Of course, Jonathan Joseph isn't getting any younger. So uh, this is, even with those key players up front, I, I see a, an average defense here that might really struggle in pass defense. And then at 14th overall, we have another team with some uh, tremendous defensive players on their roster. And that's the Los Angeles Rams. They have Aaron Donald, who's the Defensive Player of the Year and one of the best players in the league, obviously. They have two veteran shutdown corners and Aqid Tablib and Marcus Peters. They have one of, if not the best, defensive coordinator in the league in uh, former Buffalo Bills head coach Wade Phillips. But outside of Aaron Donald, I'm not a big fan of the personnel they have on the front seven. They did bring in Clay Matthews, but he's way past his prime at this point in his career. Uh, Michael Brockers is a nice space eater. Uh, Dante Fowler is, I guess, is right around on the average mark as a pass rusher. Uh, and that's kind of where this defense ranks, maybe just slightly above average. And more so because I see a bit of a regression as some of those players they have, especially in the secondary, start to age a little bit. All right, at number 13, we have the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they ranked right around 14th in the league last year in total defense. Uh, which is quite the drastic improvement from a few years past where uh, their defense always seemed to be their Achilles heel in those when they had those super high-powered offenses but always seemed to kind of blow leads or get into those shootout games. Uh, their defense has improved. Has it improved enough to bring them to the Super Bowl? Probably. Uh, they might need a few calls go their way this year. Uh, in the secondary, the Marshawn Lattimore looks like a budding star. Uh, the cornerback depth is, isn't still what you ideally would want it to be. Uh, defensive line looks pretty solid. If, if Marcus Davenport can take that next step forward as a pass rusher, that'll go a long way. Uh, pairing him with Cameron Jordan, that'll be a pretty imposing duel at the, on the defensive line. Of course, they have Dennis Allen as a longtime defensive coordinator who really knows the defense and the scheme and the personnel. Uh, that should help them out as well a little bit as well. Now, number 12, and I think now we're getting to the category of, of the good defenses. Maybe not the great defenses, but the good defenses. And I have the uh, Philadelphia Eagles here in the in the good defense category. Uh, that's now not to say that they didn't have some major struggles last year, in particular in their secondary. Our cornerback Jalen Mills really struggled as a starter. Uh, First-year player Sidney Jones uh, had his ups and downs. They still have a, s- a pretty solid starting duo at uh, safety in the ageless Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod. But where I see the strength of this defense and where it's, it might really help the secondary is, is the pass rush and the, the defensive line altogether. 
Of course, Fletcher Cox is one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. Uh, they brought in Malik Jackson, who's a really dynamic player on that defensive line. He'll replace Michael Bennett. They have young Derek Barnett, who still has room for improvement to go, but he's only going into his third season. Uh, Brandon Graham's a pretty solid player. Uh, Vinny Curry offers some pretty good depth. They have a few other young players on the defensive line as well who may, may develop into at least uh, rotational roles. And I think this is a defense that really picked it up in the playoffs last year and really demonstrated what they can be. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have faith in this defense, and I still think they rank right up there in the in the top 12 of defenses in the NFL despite their secondary struggles last year. So at number 11, I have chosen the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now it seems like every year they do put a, put forth a good defensive product on the field. Uh, they ranked sixth overall in total defense last year, 17th in points allowed. They got tremendous sack production from all over that defensive front seven uh, with T.J. Watt leading the way. But similar to the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, the reason I don't rank this team higher is I don't trust that secondary. They've had some major communication problems the the last few years. Uh, Artie Burns looks like he's not a starter material going forward. Uh, Joe Hayden Hayden is getting up there in age. Uh, They added a few nice pieces in Terrell Edmonds the last year. Of course, Tremaine Edmonds' brother. At linebacker, I think Devin Bush is going to be a really good player and maybe even a star in this league. But until I see some some improvement in that secondary, I can't really rank them any higher than this. Now, moving on, we get into my projection of the top 10 defenses in the NFL going into the 2019 season. At number 10, we have the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys had an ex- excellent defense last season. Uh, they were 7th in total defense, 6th uh, in points allowed. Uh, it actually wasn't the flashiest of defenses. They ranked kind of middle of the pack in the league in interceptions and sacks. Uh, but they were just a very solid defense and very consistent defense. If you look uh, over the course of the 2018 season, uh, they didn't allow 30 points in a game outside of the last game of the season against the Giants in what was a meaningless game. Uh, they were able to retain the centerpiece of that defense when they signed Demarcus Lawrence to that huge $100 million contract. And clearly, the starting trio of linebackers and Leighton Vander Esch, Jalen Smith, and Sean Lee rank up there as probably the best in the league or close to it. They brought in Robert Quinn at another defensive end position. Of course, they still are hopeful that they do get something out of Randy Gregory, who showed flashes when he was on the field a few years back. The secondary is not flashy, but solid enough. Uh, Safety may be their weakest position. They did bring in George Iloka, so we'll see if he has anything left in the tank. Uh, But overall, I think this is a pretty solid defense that I see having another uh, pretty good year in 2019. Now, if you're keeping track, we're at number 9 overall. We haven't heard the Buffalo Bills being called yet, and they're not going to be called at number 9 either. I'm going to choose the Indianapolis Colts here. Here's a team that underwent a 180-degree turnaround with new defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus, who came in last year. Uh, they played one of the most unique defenses in the league last year, playing almost strictly zone coverage. Uh, teams had a lot of trouble figuring it out. We'll see what happens in 2019 if teams start to adjust. Uh, They're certainly not the flashiest uh, defense in terms of names. Uh, Malik Hooker looks like a budding star at free safety. Uh, They did bring in Justin Houston. We'll see if he can still be an impact pass rusher. Uh, They have a lot of depth on that defensive line. Uh, They got some nice interior pressure from Danico Autry. I have to mention Darius Leonard, who put together a defensive rookie of the year type season. He was excellent in his rookie season. And all things are pointing upwards for this young Indianapolis Colts team going into 2019. Now we get to number 8 overall, and I have chosen the Tennessee Titans. Uh, The Bills are still on the board. And uh, like the Indianapolis Colts, the Titans have a really solid defense without having any kind of flashy or star power on that defense. Uh, Jarrell Casey's a really nice player. They did add Cameron Wake, who I think still has a little bit left in the tank. He's a, a bit of a freak of nature. They have one of the more underrated players in the league, and uh, Kevin Byard, who made an all-pro team, and uh, not many people, including Deion Sanders, have heard of him. Uh, the Titans uh, played a lot of low-scoring games last season. They were third overall in the league in points allowed, eighth overall in total defense, and I don't see many uh, subtractions going into the 2019 season. They did lose Brian Arakpo, but uh, he was really on the downside of his career, and I think Cameron Wake is a fair replacement for him. So a pretty solid defense there in Tennessee. All right, we get to number seven overall. Uh, and here's where the buck stops and the run ends. I've chosen the Buffalo Bills here. 
And I think you'll see when I do name the top six defenses overall that it would have been challenging to put the Bills ahead of these defenses if I'm going to be as objective as possible. If you do disagree with this take, I encourage you to debate me on any platform you wish. Obviously, with the Bills, it starts with our, our past defense. We were the number one team overall in the league last year. Of course, a lot of that had to do with us um, getting into those blowouts early in the season when teams kind of just didn't have to throw against us. But we definitely deserve some credit. We still have an extremely deep and loaded secondary. Uh, I did have my concerns about safety death, but I think we have enough pieces back there, especially with Saran Neal's potential emergence here. Our defensive line looks a lot better with Ed Oliver next to Star Latulale. Uh, the pass rush, we still have Jerry Hughes, of course. I think Trent Murphy is a real key player uh, that will dictate the uh, success of this defense. If he can regain his form that he had in, the, in some of the seasons with the Redskins, I think we're going to have a really nice two edge rushers to go along with Ed Oliver. Of course, our young and emerging linebackers, and Edmonds and Milano, uh, the ageless Lorenzo Alexander. It's not really a, a major weakness on this defense, and I think we're pretty pretty deep as well. I just don't know if we're an extremely dynamic defense, especially uh, with the pass rush, until I start to see results from Ed Oliver and Trent Murphy. I'm going to leave this at leave us at number seven uh, with potential opportunity to move up the board if we do get uh, some more of that pass rush going. All right, we, we move on to the top six, and this might be a little anticlimactic, so I won't take as long uh, uh, going over these top six defenses. Uh, number six overall, we have the Denver Broncos. The Broncos struggled a little bit last year with their defense. Uh, they still have, obviously, two fantastic pass rushers in Von Miller, one of the best in the league, and Bradley Chubb, who emerged as a, a star in his first season. Now, I'm going to blame some of the struggles last year on the coaching staff. I wasn't a big fan of Vance Joseph. Joe Woods, as their defensive coordinator, was a bit of a proxy defensive coordinator. I like the moves they made this year in bringing in Vic Fangio, a longtime a successful defensive coordinator, and they brought in Ed Donatel as well. So I think I, I can see a real bounce back year for the Broncos at number six overall here. At number five overall, we have uh, another one of those perennially good defensive teams in the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they always seem to invest heavily in the front seven. They have a pretty solid rotation on the defensive line. They do have their work cut out for them to replace some of the linebackers they lost in the offseason. Uh, they lost Terrell Suggs and C.J. Mosley. They also lost Darius Smith to the Packers. Uh, but I still have faith in, in this in this coaching staff to put a good defensive product on the field. They have a young pass rusher in Matt Judon. Brought in Jalen Ferguson. Uh, they took a shot on Shane Ray. Uh, their secondary looks excellent. Uh, bringing in Errol Thomas to play beside Tony Jefferson. Uh, their corners are really solid with Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, and Brandon Carr, Tavon Young. So I, I just hesitated moving them too far down the board just because uh, uh, they've had continual success. But but replacing those uh, pretty solid players that they had uh, does bear some watching. At number four overall, I chose the Jacksonville Jaguars. Another team that I expect to have a bit of a bounce back year this year. I believe some of the offensive struggles last year kind of parlayed over to the defense and caused the defense to struggle as well. I still have uh, excellent talent all throughout the defense. Up front, they have Calais Campbell, Marcel Darius, uh, a young Taven Bryan. They have a pr- tremendous pass rush deal in Yannick Ngakwe and, of course, rookie Josh Allen. I think Miles Jack is a really solid linebacker. Of course, in the secondary, you have probably the best cornerback combo in the league in A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey. Now, I do see a potential risk for kind of all of this to blow up in their face. Uh, given kind of the negative dynamic that surrounded the team last year, but you can't deny the talent on this team, so I do ra- still rank them in the top four in defenses in the league going into 2019. Now, number three overall in the league, uh, and I think here we ha- probably have, uh, we're going into the elite defense category. I think these next three defenses all have a chance to be the top defense in the league. Uh, we'll start with the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, props to my man Anthony Lynn, who's put together a pretty solid team down there in Los Angeles. With the Chargers, it starts with that pass rush duo, uh, probably the best in the league, and Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. Uh, in the middle of that defense, they drafted a player I really liked uh, in Jerry Tillery, who had some dominant games uh, last year in college. Of course, the Stanford game really stands out. On the next level, they were able to put together uh, some <laughs> really dynamic looks using their kind of linebackers and safeties interchangeably. It didn't really work out in the playoffs against the Patriots, uh, but I like the depth they have both at linebacker and in the secondary. 
In the secondary, it all starts with rookie extraordinaire last year, Derwin James, going into his second year. Casey Hayward's one of the better cornerbacks in the league. And all in all, I think uh, Gus Bradley's done a really good job with that Chargers defense. And here's another team where the defense is really going to drive them to be a a, a playoff team for sure and a potential Super Bowl contender as well. Now, if you haven't figured it out uh, by now, uh, the top two defenses in the the league going into 2019 hail from the NFC North. We're going to start with the Chicago Bears. Of course, last year... And they brought in Khalil Mack, who was a real difference maker on that defense, uh, creating a lot of turnovers, getting a lot of sacks, had a dominant first half of the season. Akeem Hicks on the defensive line is another star player for them. They'll have Roquan Smith going into his second season, who looked like an emerging star as well. Uh, there's still room for Leonard Floyd to continue to develop. Now, they did lose Vic Fangio, uh, who took over head coaching duties in Denver. Uh, he'll be a tough replacement, but they did bring in a suitable replacement in Chuck Pagano. Now, last year, they were number one in overall in points allowed and number three in total defense. Uh, I'm going to leave them right around the top here. Uh, not the top defense overall, but I'm going to give them a solid uh, number two ranking overall going into the season. And now for number one, uh, drum roll please, if you haven't figured it out yet, uh, my number one team defensively going into the 2019 season is the Minnesota Vikings. I just look at all three levels of this defense and I don't see ma- any major weaknesses. They ranked a third overall in overall defense last year. You start with the defensive line. Of course, a lot of this is predicated on Everson Griffin having a bounce back year. Uh, opposite him, they have Daniel Hunter, one of the best young pass rushers in the league. At linebacker, they were able to re-sign Anthony Barr, one of the better all-purpose players in the league. Eric Kendricks uh, continues to be a very solid linebacker. Then the secondary is fairly loaded, starting with their centerpiece at cornerback, Xavier Rhodes. Behind him, they have a stalwart cast with Trey Waynes, Mike Hughes, uh, Mackenzie Alexander, a rookie sensation, Holton Hill. They have one of the better safeties in the league in Harrison Smith. I just, like I said, the the top three defenses that I've mentioned here are all elite, but I see less uh, chance of a decline with this defense. They just have so such solid players at all three layers of the defense. They have a defensive-minded coach in Mike Zimmer. Uh, They have a pretty solid defensive coordinator in George Edwards, who actually started his career as a defensive coordinator with the Bills, but he's really turned it around and had a few solid seasons in a row now with the Vikings defense. So I see another team here whose defense is going to propel them to uh, Super Bowl contender status with the Vikings. Of course, I could be wrong on this projection, and I could be wrong on a lot of my projections. So I do want to hear your feedback. Uh, hit me up on YouTube or wherever you're listening to the show. I uh, do expect some criticism and some, um, some, good, some good debate here. I'm sure there'll be a lot of disagreement. I'd like to hear what you think about the Buffalo Bills coming in as the seventh-ranked defense going into the season. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter. It's at FBanity. That's at F-B-A-N-N-A-T-Y or at Buff Fanatics Pod. Uh, that's your show for today. I hope you enjoyed this snake countdown from 32 to 1. I hope you had some fun listening, as fun as I had uh, putting this show together. And the funny thing is, I'm sure if you ask me in a week, I'd probably even switch up my rankings a little bit, uh, depending on how uh, risque I'm feeling. Uh, but we'll see if uh, any of you could convince me to change my mind. So we'll end the show for today. I uh, hope you guys uh, get outside and enjoy the nice weather. Uh, have a good holiday. Happy 4th of July in the United States. Happy Canada Day here in Canada. And we'll see you next week. Go Buffalo Bills.